All right, I'm on. Okay, guys, let me see if I can make this bigger. This is going to be very hard for me to see comments. I see why some of these people might have helpers with it because the little chat box is about this big. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see very well, but I'm gonna put a little comment in there. See what I can get. Oh, Christy's on. Yay. Good evening, Christy. All right. I am going to, I'm going to fumble a little bit, you guys, I'm sure. Um, with this, let me put the computer out of the way. See what I can do. Um, I guess I'm just gonna go, let me, um, you're seeing me, so I will do my normal welcome. Welcome to my first YouTube live. I'm so excited. Um, my little test run, I deleted it, but it seemed like it went okay. Um, tonight, I'm going to be bringing you a fun fold that my mom found and said, hey, this is adorable, you should try this. So um, I, it was a big slimline card, one of the like, 10, 10 and a half inches. Um, I cut it down to fit into a letter size envelope. And so I've spent a lot of time today. You guys should see my trash, my examples, my samples, my, I cut it up a lot, but I think I figured it out. I think I got the um, dimensions down. And so I will post it in my newsletter next week. So for anybody that um, is not a subscriber of my newsletter, you can get that at greenthumbstampers.com. If you're on your phone, the little menu, um, click on that and then it'll say sign up for my newsletter. Or if you're on your computer, it'll be on the right hand side. Um, it's kind of my blog, but it's a, a, like a stamping software. So um, I use it mainly to write my tutorials. I don't blog on it a whole lot. But when I do um, creations, they go up there too. So you may see random creations that I've made, um, but nothing to go with them. No, no blog posts or anything. It's just, um, it's a cool software. It's called TAMS. If you're a stamper, you can get that. Um, these are my stamps and you can use it uh, quite a bit of the features or you could pay $3 a month for the um, extended features, but it's awesome. Um, Kristen, Kristen, um, I forget her last name, Chenow uh, Chenoweth, but something on there. Her husband wrote it for us, um, wrote the software, and um, he maintains it for stampers. So anyway, I'm going to, uh, what do we got going on? Oh, God, you guys, Stamp It Up has so much going on right now. Um, tomorrow, Thursday, starts the sale. All stamp sets in the annual catalog are 15% off, except for the host sets. Tomorrow is also another new um, weekly deals. And if you happen to go out like on Wednesdays, I, I believe it has something to do with the overlap um, for the foreign countries that are ahead of us in time zone. Um, there will be a point when the, the sale items are overlapped. So if you're out there right now and look at the weekly deals, you'll see tomorrow's as well as mo most of them anyway. I didn't see all of last week's. And anyway, you will see an overlap. So um, you can get some of those. Um, but the sales, that's tomorrow. The um, weekly deals is tomorrow. And you can pair all this stuff together while supplies last. Um, the perfect partners you could add on tomorrow. Um, and that is the six stamp sets that now have dies that go with them. And all of that can also be used if you sign up to be a demonstrator. You can get all of that in your kit. So your $99 kit, you get $125 worth of goodies that you pick and you can get all these sale prices in there so you really maximize your kit if you were to do it like tomorrow um or before you know 
oh no, the sale's only tomorrow. That 15% off is only tomorrow, 24 hours. So uh, I will start rambling. I think that's it. I think I got it all covered. I'm going to turn my camera down and show you guys the card that we're going to do. And I will hope and pray that I am able to cut it right. Because as you guys know, I said I cut this thing. Uh, let's see, hopefully it didn't go down. I haven't seen it switch over yet, but maybe it'll... Uh, da, 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 da. It, it, when I did this, um, when I did my little um, live, it took a minute, or my test run, it took a minute to switch down, but are you guys seeing me yet? I'm not seeing that it... Let me remove spotlight. Let me go back and spotlight it again. Spotlight for everyone. It's not switching over to my desktop now that I'm live, real time live. It's not switching down to my desk. Is it switching? Let me see. Uh, oh, there it went. Yay. So it just takes a minute. So. I just have to be confident that it's actually going to do it, but I don't know um, when I see it in the background, I don't know if it did it fast enough. So I don't want to start showing you stuff, but I'll figure that out. So here is the card we're going to make you guys. And my mom found this. Um, Lisa Curcio is the um, person that she saw that made it. And she called it a lapel fold because I guess this kind of looks like a lapel and it folds in like that and as I said earlier um, she made a ten and a half like a big one that would fit in a legal envelope and I narrowed it down to fit into a oh you know just like a business size envelope or a letter size envelope so I will get started and show you guys what I came up with um, you could put a magnetic closure on it. You could put a belly band on it. I think by the time you stuff it in your envelope, it'll be just fine to, to leave it like that. And it does stand up however open you want to make it stand up. If you want to put like the points together and it'll stand up, it would stand up like that. You can't see it that way. So let me show you. Let me show you what I got. Put that over there. Uh, yeah, you guys, I could see Christy. Okay, I can't, I can't see those little tiny comments without stopping to focus. So I'm going to show you guys my version. And as I um, stated earlier, I'll have the um, dimensions and stuff in my newsletter that you can sign up for. I don't send out a lot of um, emails with that just you know my weekly newsletter and then maybe occasionally my monthly stamp of the month that kind of stuff but it's not like something every single day all right so oh, let me get my computer up a little more and there we go move my this is my host code for the month. If you do order something um, like tomorrow on all this deal, if you don't spend $150, I would appreciate it if you use my host code T-H-S-N-F-U-E-U. -E and I probably do also need to state that I do not own the rights to whatever you may hear going on in the background. Facebook is stopping a lot of my posts again because they say that I am uh, I have something going on that I don't have rights to like in the background or um, I don't know if it I don't know what it is something in other countries that I can't um, they can't publish so they mute it but I don't think that it's posting correctly and then I can't download it um, to load it when I was trying to do my pumpkin videos so anyway I'm saying that and hoping that I do not have rights to whatever you hear in the background. 
covers because Mike is down here watching TV. And so that's the only thing that I can think of that could be doing it. So back to this, our base. Let me find my little um, note with my instructions on it. Oh, you can't, oh, here it is. Whew. So I wrote them, here's, here's part of my chicken scratches from the day. Oh, no, I need to do an eighth. Nope, I need to do a quarter. Whew. So I'm gonna go slow and hope that it all um, comes out correctly. So we've got our card base is nine inches wide by six inches up and down tall. Okay. We are going to score it at three inches. And I, I'm going to do a lot of um, scoring because one thing that I find is I don't see the lines very well. And with all my lighting, um, I may really not see them very well. So I'm going to try and score heavily. So we're going to score now at six so that when I'm putting it together that they'll stand out. So three and six, all right? Then we're going to turn it on the short side and with a pencil, mark it at two and a quarter inches on the top. I don't think my pencil goes through. On the top and at the bottom. Make sure you're on the same mark. Oh, it looks like a two and a quarter. Okay. Then you're going to score from the top score line. So this was, we'll say that's the six inch line, but I'll just confuse everybody. So we're going to score from our pencil mark up to the score line that we made either the three or the six. So I'm gonna position those. And this is where I was having a lot of trouble. These matter guys, these score lines matter. And I'm finding just a little smidgy bit off. Then the designer paper doesn't wanna line up. And you know me and my math abilities. So I'm um, looks like I'm getting, up to the corner. So then we're going from the corner again, down to the bottom edge. So I'm gonna put the corner in there and the bottom corner in there. And we're gonna score. Thinking that looks right. I'm down here in the corner. Then we're going to switch it and do the other side. So we're gonna go from that pencil mark up to the corner. So I'm gonna put the pencil mark in the track and the corner in the track and we're gonna score. Then we're going to take that upper score line down to the lower corner. So we're making kind of like a sunbursty look, I guess I'll call it. I think I look like I'm still lined up good. Ooh, that one might be, you guys, I'm gonna do that one just a smidge over. It doesn't look like I'm, I must've moved it. It doesn't look like I'm all the way in the corner. So there, that looks better. All right. So now can you see those score lines? Kind of like a little sunbursty looking Thing. So I'm going to set that aside for a second. And then I'm going to bring in my designer series paper. I have two different patterns because as you could see, one side is one pattern and then the other side is the other pattern. And then you'll get just a little bit of each one. So once we put it down, you can decide which side you want to be the front unless you, um, you know, like your score lines kind of already want to go a certain direction. So this could be the front. So you'd want to know which one you want to put on the inside or the outside. So some people are particular that way. So we got two different patterns and these are 
two and three quarters wide. Let me just verify that by five and three quarters long. We are going to, all right, I'm gonna probably confuse you, but what I wondered earlier on one of my samples is if I went ahead and did two at the same time, that would put me having these two cut exactly the same. I would have a front and a back cut to the same, and I'm going to try it. So we're going to have, well, let me show you this first. So we're going to make a mark on these at two and one eighth. Now the one that you want on the top or the right hand side of your card, you will put a mark on the right hand side for the one that you would have on this will be the right hand side oh let me open it up this will be the right hand side and then the one that you'll have on the left hand side you could bring down to the bottom of your trimmer and you will put a mark on this side so what i'm going to try and do is i would put the mark down here so I'm gonna flip it and put it here so I can cut them both at the same time. And in my head, is that going to be correct? I'm gonna cut this off and it's gonna go here. And then I'm gonna have, yeah, I think it will. I think it'll be right if I cut that off. No, then this square will go. I just better do them one at a time because now that I'm talking to you guys about it, it's not making sense. So hopefully we could just cut it. But you guys get the idea. I'm going to layer, put my dot in there, and then I'm going to come up to the tip and so i'm going to i learned a tip from lisa's video she called it anchoring you want to anchor your cutting blade inside so that you don't tear the edges so if you put it down somewhere inside poke it in it makes a cut and then you can slice it off without it's more for this piece when you've got the pointy edge that you're going to cut and you put the blade down, it wants to jam it and um, jam it all up in there. But if you put it down, let me make sure I'm still in there. If you put it down, lift it up and put it down somewhere in on the paper and start it, then you will not risk wrinkling those all up all right so there's our right hand side over here now for our left hand side so i'm not going to move the trimmer but i'm going to pull it down to two and an eighth and i'm gonna well i could do it right here and make my little mark oh is that upside down I think that one kind of looks upside down. So we're going to go two and an eighth. If you do have a pattern going on, you want to make sure that you're cutting it, I'm going to say right side up so that you're getting the, the pattern. So it's going to go the right direction for you after you cut it. Because that would have, these pumpkins, when I got it over here, would have been upside down had I left it the other way. All right, then I'm going to cut that off. And then we're going to do the same down here. Line up those points in that track. I'm going to move my blade up a little bit. I'm going to verify it. Now that I moved it, I'm going to slide it down so my eyes can see up there better to the track.
that glare is not helping. There's the bottom in the track. Why is the top not going in the track? There we go. Now there's the left-hand side. And had I been thinking, I would have pre-done one side. I would do those after. No, I better cut them now so when we get going, we're going. So I'm gonna put that one in there. This one down here. That's my top. Two and a quarter. I'm gonna put our bottom one in at two and a quarter. So let's see if I do these both at the same time this time. I'm feeling a little bit uh, crazy. So we want to cut here. I don't know why that, I don't think that's gonna work out. I don't wanna risk cutting it. You guys, is that gonna work out? I go from here to here. And I go. Yeah, that'll be right. Pretty sure, we're gonna try it. We're going for it. They're two different widths. So let's trim them back up. The... All right. My little mark off. Two and an eighth, nope, there it is. So now we're gonna cut from the top point to the mark. Oh, I'm so scared that I'm gonna do that wrong. See, and I would have done it wrong. I wasn't seeing the mark in the right spot. There it is, way down there. Struggle bus. Might be all that iced tea I gulped. Got me all jittery now. Got my nerves going. All right, so we're gonna cut that. I'm so nervous, cause you know, I told you, I've been doing this all day. So there's our left and our right. It did work, yay. So have confidence in yourself, Joe. We're gonna put two pieces in the channels. Bottom and the top. And this is where I was having trouble earlier. I wasn't paying that close of attention and I think it was getting moved when I put them in the channel. All right, so now we got all our pieces cut. Move this out of the way. And now for the fun. So this is gonna be our front. And then you can use your liquid glue, you can use tape. The um, liquid glue, you can get in all these little pointy corners better to make sure that it gets stuck down. But I was wearing it most of the day. So we'll see how I can do here. And then you're just gonna line them up and look where your score line is. And me and liquid glue, I uh, I'll have it all over me and all sticky and 
I don't have my, yes, I do have my glue eraser. So we're just going to glue these down. Into the spots that they belong. You gotta, um, my, what I was finding in all of my trials was that you want to line up your design, like your pattern, and then just know that you're pretty darn close to where it needs to be. And then I just gonna go from there. Let's see, uh, put some glue on there. And then this one. And see, since I did my own measurements, possibly I don't have them right. If there's any math whizzes out there that would be able to um, tell me where my score line should be. That was where my trouble was all day today, trying to get these score lines in the right spots. I'll have to come back to that once it's dry. And now we'll move on to the other side. And like I say, hers was a, a tall one. And I just did my best to shrink down our measurements to what I thought was what we needed to make this cool card work for us. And I'm wearing the glue, guys. I'm wearing the glue. I got it stuck all over me. So then this is, you know, we're just piecing everything into place, trying to look at our widths, make sure we're doing okay. From top to bottom, left to right, distance between. line up our pattern. So I'm looking here where the squash kind of looks like it would come together if we were piecing the paper back together. I'm gonna call that good. Now that I'm all sticky, we'll flip it over and we'll do the same on the other side. I, this is where I was saying I could have probably had one side done for you guys, but I was so iffy on how I wanted to cut it to see if I could make sure that they were all going to line up the same way that I didn't do it ahead of time. Now this is where I'm struggling to see my score lines. You could probably uh, fold on them first. Didn't give that a deep thought. Six of one half dozen the other if you want to try and line up on your score lines when they're already creased. But I'll go kind of fast here. So I'll probably, if I perfect this a little better, do a slower Finally Friday version for you. Anybody who's coming to Stamp Stack on Sunday, we will make a version of this card. Um, like I said, if there's any math people out there that can tell me what the nine by six inch card, where my score line should be, that would be awesome. I got, um, like I said, I got, I, I got it figured out and I will show you let me stop and show you what I did. So this is how I ended up figuring out somewhat. I made a plain white and I folded it in half 
And then I went and just folded this piece back how it needed to be. And then I finagled this piece and folded it like this. So that told me where, when I opened it, where my score line, where my like starting point was and stuff. My only problem was it might need to be like on the 16th and I did not want to do that to you guys because we're, I don't like even to go to the eights if I don't have to, but I think I may have needed to go on the 16th. So it would have either needed to, if I play with it some more, I might need to change the size of the card just a little bit to get this um, little piece here onto an even. Like through here, if it's up a little bit more, I might be able to get this onto an even number, which would then help maybe all around, but it was fun. I had fun. I hope you like it. I hope you give it a try. Like I said, I just wanted to shrink it down. I'm not always a big fan of the tall slim line cards. I guess the slim line cards, because this, I call this a slim line, but it's a smaller one. It's a mini slim line. The others, I have a hard time. You know why I don't like them as well? I, I can't decorate that much space to get the um, slim line all, there's so much on the front. And so I did do one with that paper pumpkin kit that we had um, with the weird monkey and whatever else was in there, a, a elephant and a giraffe maybe. I did do a slim line with that, but, um, I always shrink them down to this because it is easier for me to decorate the front of this. But I do have some cool dies, some slimline dies that I can, I haven't tried yet, but they're in my uh, no buy bag still. So we've got our card front and back done. Now we can, I should give that a second to dry. Let's put the um, piece for the inside. Let's do that while I try and get some of this glue off and I let that dry for a second. So we've got a two and three quarters by five and three quarters piece for the inside. And I'm just going to decorate it with the Fond of Autumn stamp set. I was trying to think if there was a die with that. Um, and I'm thinking there is, but I'm, I didn't use the whole thing. So I will show you, I'm just gonna use part of the, I'm gonna put autumn wishes up on the top of this. And so you're gonna want to, um, this is gonna stick out the top a little bit of the card. So I've got autumn wishes, and then I put in mine, because I wanted a little something, something down there. I put one of these little acorns. Where's my little, so I put an acorn. I put it all in the same Cajun craze. Got a little acorn. Well, let's see if I could put two acorns on this one. No, I don't want to put two acorns. I'll put, uh, Two leaves again. And there's a little oak leaf in there too. So I'll put an oak leaf on the. And they're kind of big, I know. But they're too small, probably. They're for the size of the acorn, but. It's going to work. I'm going to do it. So I got that. And now we're going to say that we think our glue might be dry enough to work with. I'm going to glue this inside. And 
And we're going to have this be our inside this pattern. Well, yeah, I want this pattern to be the inside because I like the uh, vegetables sticking out of the other one. So I just centered that in there. Look at the little glue blobs I got everywhere off my fingers. All right, so now you just want to fold on your score lines and give them a good crease. So you fold in, you fold back, And then this one goes in. And with all the glue I got on there, let's see if I can get some of it off. If it wants to stick. Everybody's got their goober removers. A must have in your craft room. And it's just, I don't even know what this thing is. It's like a hard um, rubber cement or something that's just hardened. And then when you rub across your adhesive, like here, I got some on my desk, you just rub across it and it balls it all up. And then you can, I think the balls might eventually fall off, but you can pick them off and toss them. I got right here's all sticky. I can see it right there on the, there we go. I think I got it now. So then we're going to move over to this side. So it goes in and back and in. And this is where I'm telling you that your fold, your creases matter because, and your score lines, because one of the cards, when I tried it, I got the designer paper to fit perfectly on it. I was so excited, but when I folded it up, like in the end, it hung over the edges. So if you get your score line down too far, it will, um, this one stuck way out down here. So if it, I had it down here, so it stuck out more. So like I said, it was a trial and error, but it was a fun day. So now we're left with this. We're not left with it. We've created this. This is what we've created now. So you've got the lapel card as like I said, that's what she called it. And then these are going in. And so now you could put something around it. You could put a ribbon, you could put a belly band, something if you were really, really wanting to hold it shut all the way. I'm thinking once you put it in the envelope and the person that gets it, pulls it out of the envelope, they're just gonna love every second of it and aren't even gonna notice that it's crazy opening. I'll give them some good creases. All right. So now what I did was I got my paper and I'm gonna use this here, but I'm only going to pull out the oak leaf part and these three acorns. So the way this is designed, you could, they're not connected. So you can cut around and have just some flowers. You could use just these berry things or this oak leaf part here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put it on my block and I'm going to stamp it in black. And I want the oak leaf part. And you're going to get a lot of the other stuff too, but that's all right. Make sure my paper's big enough. What the heck, Joe? Come on, my foamy thing. All right, I'm gonna stick it down. Oh, I'm off my foamy thing is why. Yep, right there's the edge. 
Hopefully I lined that back up right. Look at that. You think I knew what I was doing. All right, so then what I did on this card is I just pulled out my watercolor pencils. And so you don't have to add the water and smear it around. I just colored, so I got the crushed curry pencil, colored the acorns, and then I came over the top of that with the early espresso, and I did the top, the little, you know what, when I saw these, I said, those are kind of weird looking acorn tops. I guess I never really paid attention what the top of an acorn looked like. They look like raspberries to me. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird, but I've been noticing on my walks every day, the acorn tops all over the sidewalk and sure shoot, if they don't look like this, I was really surprised. Things you don't learn from a stamp set. I guess I thought they were smooth. Maybe it's a different, maybe up north where I came from, the oak trees have different tops on them. I'm gonna go with that one. So I just kind of colored those tops in and then I went real lightly over the top of the crushed curry to try and give them a, acorns in my memory bank are kind of a yellowy color or green. I think some of them on the ground these days are green, but squirrels don't have to work too hard if they're just picking them up off the ground either, do they? All right, so there, that's what I did there. And I'm not going to do the whole um, rest of the leaves. I took my uh, rich razzleberry watercolor pencil here and I went around this thing, the squiggle, swirly thingamajigger. And then I came through with, I got cherry cobbler, Cajun craze and garden green that I just came in and randomly colored up my, all the leaves. Now, probably if I'd have Googled an oak leaf, they don't change to all these colors like another leaf would do, but I think they might, in my head, I'm seeing them as all tan, but I wanted some color on my, um thing here i didn't want to have it be all brown but i did come back through when i was done with the color and i went over it with some brown just to kind of give it just in case you know so then i did all those leaves like that got my scissors out and i fussy cut it out so will look like this. And I cut these little things off and I have them there. So that's, that's what I did for that piece. And then I cut around. So these flowers, I told you we didn't need this little thing. So easy, there's enough space to cut around. And that was pretty cool. So I got all those. And it doesn't matter which direction you fold these. I have a piece of black. My sample card, I used um, early espresso because I thought it would blend in with the leaves better, but this time I'm gonna use black and I got a one inch punch. We do not make any more, sorry, but you could use a circle die or whatever you got laying around at home because most of us have our old time essentials that we've kept, like our, some of our punches and things like that, even though they're retired. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue this circle on, I'm gonna glue it on the left side. And I just gonna kind of glue it in the middle. So I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna glue on my point. Could use your liquid glue if you want. I'm just gonna use my snail. And I'm gonna stick this circle on. Now you don't wanna put it on both sides cause you want it to open. If I put it on both sides, it would seal it shut. You could put a little piece of um, Velcro on here too. Although I'm not sure 
it's a sproingy card. It's going to spring out all over. Then I'm going to take a dimensional and I'm going to put it on. Let me see which acorn am I going to put it on? I'm going to put it on. Oh, and see, I'll show you. I, to get the centers of this cut out, I cut the um, acorns loose. Just, just if you see something weird looking there, that's what I did. That's what's happening. So I'm going to put it under this one that's stationary over here. And I'm going to call that good. Because if I get too many on there, who knows what I'm going to end up gluing, gluing down. And I need it to be able to move freely. So I'm going to put it on there. Kind of like so. And I'll push my dimensional down. And then I've got those two little purple things. Razzleberry. And then I just came in and like tucked them in there. So I put a little bit of glue on and I'm going to use my tape, but you could use the liquid glue. It might work even better. And then I'm just tucking them under the leaves. And then it'll stick to it when I push it down. And then the other one, I'm going to do the same thing. And I'll tuck it. Or maybe I'm not. I'm shaking now, you guys. That tea must be hitting me. All right, so we'll glue that baby down here where I don't have to. It's not where I want it. I kind of wanted it in there a little more, but. And there we go with that. And then on the inside, we got Autumn Wishes. And let me look at my sample. I think that's all. I didn't put any ribbon. We stamped on. Yep. Oh, and that was where I put the sample. So there we go. That's our copycat fun fold lapel card for tonight. Shrunk down to a um, little letter size envelope. And that's it. So guys, oh, I didn't, um, I got the two winners from last week's cards. I forgot to bring that over. I had Debbie Green and Janice McPherson are the winners from last week. I will get those in the mail. And I do have one of these cut and ready to go. So go ahead and share the video. And just like every other week, if you share the video, I will, um, be able to hopefully go back into the comments and see who shared and I'll figure it out from there because it's all new to me obviously on how the comments work how the share thing's going to work but I'm sure that I can go in and read who shared well, maybe this one will work even better and there's a place I can look at and, and see who shared but I will continue to do the um card kit giveaway for the winner, the random number generator winner of those people. And um, we'll call it good. So I'll go back, see what I could do, learn from it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that YouTube is going to work out because I think it's going to be way better for me to um, be able to publish this stuff. So I'm going to say that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I will see some of you on Sunday. Again, if you want to join on the stamp stack for the weekend, I left the cards, I took them back. So we will be doing this fold and I got one of my paper pumpkin alternates design we'll do. And then a couple more that I uh, came up with for stamp stack, 10 car or $10 for four cards, $15 if you want me to mail it to you or um, porch pickup and I will cut everything that I can for you and just message me comment do whatever and uh, I will get to you somehow to find out your address and all that good stuff all right 
So I'm going to quit rambling. Thanks a lot, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I appreciate you watching. Bye-bye.